So we're now going to do the sum of integers. We're going to find out the sum of the first n natural numbers is this particular thing we've got here. And this is something that does not appear in the formula book, but you need to know this one off by heart. And possibly you have come across this before. So this is saying we understand what this bit here actually means. It actually means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus all the way up to n. OK? Have you ever seen this formula before? You don't think so? OK, so it's telling us that the sum of these numbers is a half multiplied by how many of them are, multiplied by one more of how many, that, of, multiplied by one more of how many of them there are. So that doesn't sound very clear, but you can read what the formula says and understand it from there. So it's a half n, n plus 1. Now, you may have seen a proof for this before. You may not have seen a proof for this before. Um, I think if you haven't, if this isn't ringing any bells, I might kind of show you uh, one version of these proofs that we might do. I'm trying to think which version I want to have a look at. So there's going to be two versions. One of them is about the sums of the numbers like this. And this is a mathematician called Gauss. And his teacher asked him to do this when he was in primary school because he was one of those children that was like really far ahead of everyone else. And the teacher said to him, uh, just to try and keep him occupied, I want you to add up all of the numbers from 1 to 100. And he did it really, really quickly. So I'm going to show you a different proof after this one. But I'm just going to give you a bit of time to think about how he might have added up all of those numbers from 1 to 100 quickly. And I've put some of these numbers here that might help us think about how to do it. Did you have an idea, Andrew? Well, he would compare 1 and 100 to a 99, 3 and 98. Fantastic. And, so on, and then just add 50 at the end because it doesn't have a pair. Uh, would it have a pair? No, it would 51. 50 so would go with 51. Times 101 by 50. Okay, so what Andrew just said is what Gauss did is he took the beginning and the last one and then the second and the second to last one. And what did he notice about all of those pairs? They would always add up to 101. So why don't we do it with one of these examples that we've got here? We've got 1 and 12. And then we'd have our next pair, 2 and 11. And then we've got 3 and 10. So hopefully the thing that we're noticing is they always, as you just said, Andrew, they add up to a constant amount each time. And so by noticing that, it was able to spot that pattern and say, OK, well, they're adding up to a constant amount. How many pairs of them would I have? Blah, 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 and work through it in that kind of way that he has there. So why don't we actually think about it then with this formula that we've got here? OK, how um, first of all, what would all of the pairs add up to? Yeah, so the first pair would be a 1 and an n. The second pair would be an n minus 1 and a 2, which is an n plus 1. So all of these add up to, they add up to n plus 1. But how many pairs does he have? Oh, half the Pardon? Half of, n. half of n, because there are n numbers. So there's going to be half of n pairs, because you're matching them together. So you have a half of n n plus 1. I mean, it's not really a, a proof so much as like an explanation of this. Um, but it's just nice to see that this formula, although I can tell you what it is, we can actually understand like what this formula means. So that's how um, Gauss did this. He added up the first and last number, and then he multiplied it by 50. So it was 101 multiplied by 50, which is This is like the type of maths I'm the worst at. <laughs> like 5,050. So he told his primary school teacher 5,050, and he or she was probably quite annoyed and then had to try and make Gauss come up with some more amazing maths and so stuff as well. Did they? I don't, I don't know the ins and outs. I probably should find out a bit more because I always say this story. I should probably know actually what happened with it. Now, there's another version of this proof that you might like to see as well. I like geometric proofs. I find geometric proofs like quite interesting. Um, so you'll notice, um, let me see if I can do it in this kind of way. So if this is my first number, and then I have, that's 1 plus 2. So this is if the sum of the numbers up to 1, this is the sum of the natural numbers up to 2. Then I've got, if I added on 3, I would get this shape. 
if I then added on four, I would get this shape. So the quantity that there is here should be the answer to the sum of the natural numbers up to that point. So this one here actually represents the sum of r from r equals 1 to 4. And you can clearly see the answer is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, a proof for this would be that if you um, doubled this, you would end up with a shape from r equals 1 to n of r. Um, mm, let's do a doubling slightly slower than that. If I was going to double this, you would then end up with a rectangle where quite easily you could find the area of that rectangle and then you could half it. So what's the area of this rectangle? 20, and then half of it is 10, so it does actually come up to the right amount that we've got here. But we need to just know the lengths of the side of the rectangle. So the length of this side is 4, and the length of this side is 4 plus 1. So if I was going all the way up to n, the base of this rectangle, what would the length of it be? No, it's not got anything. It would just be n, because it would have n dots across. How long would the rectangle be? n plus 1. Remember, we want half of it. So the area, in other words, or how many, how many there are inside it, would be a half of n multiplied by n plus 1. So there's kind of like a geometric illustration of it. It's, it's not a proof until there's a lot of language that goes alongside these kinds of things, but there's two ways of illustrating it. One of them numerically and thinking about pairs of numbers, one of them geometrically and thinking about shapes and dimensions of rectangles. Andrew, did you have a question? Yeah, um, so you know that formula, rule it, all, like, always solve, or should always solve, like, the divisors they give uh, in the A-levels? Only for the sums of integers at the moment, for the sums of just r. So, so far what we know how to do is we know how to do the sum of a constant. Now we're looking at the sum of an integer. Okay. We're then going to do the sums of square numbers, the sums of cube numbers, and then after that it gets pretty messy. Okay. So what I'd like you to have a quick go at is um, in your head, or using the formula, I want to see if you can come up the solutions to these four questions that we've got here. So you can either do them in your head or you can use the formula. And this was really to illustrate the point we were talking about um, earlier with those shapes. So 